Christmas memories. All right, so today is cookie day. I just set out some of the dough. I have a ton of dough. So much dough. Speaking of dough, okay, I'm gonna do the cookies when I get home after I do my face because we have dinner plans tonight, but we're about to go to Cassandra's. And I made the flowers. I found, I found it. it. I found it. I mean, like, it was, it was on the table, so. Yeah, I put it, it was on the stairs. So we're about to go to Cassandra's, right? And I'm about to buy 100 bucks in lottery tickets because we're doing a white elephant gift exchange. And I've been having this conversation out with people, which I thought was funny. So um, when I was in working at a call center, 19 years old, I gave my boss a lottery ticket. I gave her multiple lottery tickets, and she ended up winning on one. And um, I remember, like, feeling like, dang, I really could have used that because I was broke as a joke, you know what I'm saying? And it wasn't like an insane amount of money. It was like 50, 100 bucks, something like that. And um, still, in my brain, I was like, dang, I could have used that, you know what I mean? Okay, so let's fast forward to us being adults, us having more than, you know, 50 bucks. And I'm like having this conversation with a few different people and I was like, what if I give these tickets out and somebody like wins a million bucks? Like what's the etiquette when someone else gives you a scratch off and you actually win substantial money? And so my mom says, well, if you gave me a lottery ticket and I won a million bucks on it, she's like, I'm probably giving you half, half of whatever comes home. You know what I'm saying? I was like, oh, okay. And then I was like, every I said everybody would not do that. And um, I was like, I, and I was like, what if someone from work gives it to you, right? I asked these people. And um, one of them was like, well, if someone from work gives it to me, I'm probably not gonna tell him. <laughs> I was like, you're just gonna slowly stop going to work or what? Like, that's, it wasn't my mom, it was somebody else. But I was like, what is the etiquette? Like, let's even bring it down from a million bucks. If you win, let's say a hundred grand. That's still a lot of money, even with taxes. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, it, it is right. It's a substantial amount of money. What is the etiquette? Are you are you giving some to the person that gave you the ticket? Is it like does it depend on who it is? If it was a coworker, if it was your sibling, if it was your parent, you know what I'm saying? Like, does it depend on who it is? I can tell you very well. I did not get no dollar back from the hundred that my boss won that one year. But like, why would I? Because the whole point of giving someone a ticket is for them to hopefully be able to win. But is that really the mentality? Like, I got this idea of giving people lottery tickets for this white elephant from y'all. You were the ones who said to do it. So I am very interested on what you would do if you won like a million bucks off a of scratch off. If I did, I would, you, well you can't win a billion off a of scratch off. But okay, so I'm just curious what you guys would do with your winnings if you got them. I'm, I'm very curious. I don't think there's any wrong answer. I just think like, I hope that I give somebody a ticket tomorrow at this party and I hope they win and I hope this comes to fruition. And I gotta be like, what y'all gonna do now? Everybody just watch you scratch that out. What you gonna do now? I personally would not want it only because I am financially blessed and I have done a good job at managing my money and so I personally if I gave it to my family I wouldn't expect them to be like here's half like I wouldn't expect that but um yeah I don't know I told them I was like imagine you give like your friend this ticket your friend was a million bucks boom friendship over because what is the proper thing to do there what if they just keep it then you're probably gonna be like you wouldn't have that if it wasn't for me you wouldn't have had that I'm about to fight you over, like, you know what I'm saying? I put myself together a little bit. I wore this sweater again because of course I did lovely. It's Christmas time. So before she gets put away, I wanna wear her a couple more times. Um, or I guess I wear him a couple more times, right? So I saw a house on the corner and they put up a sign, a street sign. So it's slightly smaller than a real street sign, but it's a street sign. And they put up a street sign that says Clark and Griswold but they live on the corner by the street sign. And so I'm driving by and I was like, Clark Griswold, what the hell would I enter Christmas town? Sir, sir, that's, that seems dangerous. I mean, I get it. A lot of people are gonna understand who Clark Griswold is, 
but not everybody, okay? Some people are gonna be coming to town like, well, I'm on the corner of Griswold and Clark. Where's the house? Anyway, um, so I've left all of our dough out. I have two ovens. Did you know this? I knew that, but we only use the one on the wall. We never use the one under the stove. In fact, this might be only the first or second time that we've ever used it, but this should come in clutch for us uh, to use two ovens at once, especially if we need to do different temps, which I don't think we really will. So just to remind you guys of the cookie dough that we made last Friday, and if you wanna see me making the cookie dough, you can watch that vlog. It's called Making Cookie Dough or something, very obvious. Um, so we made a double batch of chocolate chip cookies. I will link all of the recipes that I can. A couple of them came out of a book and I will link the book. It was a hundred cookies or whatever. And this is the butterscotch cookies, which have heath, like toffee in them. They have chocolate chips in them. It's real good stuff. And then we are also doing the brown butter pecan cookies. Oh, that's what I need. I need him to give me some glazed pecans. I'm gonna have to call him. And then the soft gingerbread with maple glaze cookies, another double batch. They're almost all double batches. And then we're gonna do a double batch of peanut butter cookies. Some of them are gonna have the little thumbprint, like the, the Hershey's Kiss on top. And then we're gonna do our peppermint mocha cookies, which will be dipped in white chocolate and then covered in peppermint bits. And then we will be doing our gingerbread crinkle cookies, which will be rolled in powdered sugar, I believe, and have that more crinkly look. Maybe regular sugar, I'm not sure. That's a new recipe for me. And then a classic, an oldie but a goodie, the best rolled sugar cookies, which is a recipe from all recipes, which I have been making for almost 10 years now. It is a phenomenal recipe, it's perfect, and this is once again a double batch. Those will be sugar cookies that will be getting decorated. So um, a bunch of these are still very frozen, which is totally fine because you want your dough to be cold. They spread less when they're cold. Um, so it kind of just depends on what you want your cookie to look like. I'm a big fan of big, soft cookies. And what that means to me is that you gotta take it out of the oven a little bit before you think you need to normally. Oh, those look almost done. Take them out. Take them out. Let them finish on the pan. Or, ooh, these look perfect. Take them out, take them off that pan. Get them off of that pan. Because if you leave them on that pan, they're not gonna be perfect. The pan is hot. The pan is going to continue to cook your cookies. If you never seem to be able to get the right consistency, it's probably happening in your baking and in the fact that your dough is not the right temperature. So um, at least that's what I found. I'm no pastry chef, I'm no baker, you know, by trade. <laughs> but the things that I have found that have helped me are to really monitor when I'm baking. Use a timer and know that if your first batch took 14 minutes, your second batch, probably gonna take less time. The stove is hot, sure, it says it's at that amount, whatever, but you know, your first time using the cookie sheet, it's, it's, it's cold. Your second time using the cookie sheet, it retained a little bit of that heat. Your cookie dough maybe came up a couple more degrees as well, so just know that it's not gonna be perfect every time, um, meaning it's not gonna be the same amount of time each time. So I use regular, regular cookie sheets. I get these at TJ Maxx, and I always put a sill pad on. You don't have to use silicone mats, that's all it is. Um, I have off-brand ones, <laughs> I have actual sill pads, I have a variety, I have a set that came from Target where it was a cookie sheet with a rack, a cooling rack as well. And it also came with a sill pad that fits perfectly on there. So I got this pack at Walmart or at Target and it's perfect. Um, so that's what I do, I cover each one. But you don't need to use a silicone mat. Parchment paper will do basically the same thing and you can reuse parchment paper. Just make sure that you're trimming off the edges because they can sometimes start to get singed or even catch fire. So just make sure you're not leaving a bunch of extra edge of parchment paper. Like don't let it come over the side. You know what I mean? Like if you're using parchment paper, cut it two size. That's it. So I have a bunch. Oh, and this is a new one that I got. Like it's so cute. It's like a little, yeah. Because I'm making so many cookies, I'm gonna have a lot of cookie sheets going. Mine are all regular size. I don't have any of the huge ones. Oh, I used to have them at the old house actually, but I don't have them anymore and that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. Maybe I do and I just don't know where they are. I also have this wire rack, which I really like and I got it years ago, but it folds out. So 
it's easier for storing because it gets smaller but it's quite large you can also pop one or both sides off if you want so i'm gonna lay these out okay and then last but not least this is the next important part for me when it comes to cookie making are my scoopers so these are both one tablespoon scoopers i use these for meatballs i use them for whatever i use them for anything that i want to be consistent these particular ones are especially good if you're making cake bowls um they're like i said they're a tablespoon so you can decide oh i'm gonna overfill it each time or i'm gonna go flat each time whatever it may be but they're perfect for having a consistent amount of dough and then this is my two tablespoon scooper so this one i like to use when i want that bigger chunkier like just thicker cookie i like to use one of these so that's what i use and that's what we're gonna be doing today and so let's go ahead and get this party started y'all i have four cookie sheets and we're gonna start by doing the basic basic ones so some of these need to be decorated etc etc they need to be dipped they need to be rolled whatever i'm gonna start with the ones that don't need to be anything <laughs> chocolate chip cookies and butterscotch cookies they just need to be scooped and cooked so we're gonna start with this is still cold but it's not hard so i'm gonna start with the butterscotch cookies and then and then we'll go into the chocolate chip so i'm making cookies for a cookie exchange that's happening tomorrow with my family i don't think i'm gonna make all of any of these cookies today now one thing i could have done when i was putting my cookie dough in is i could have pre-scooped and put them in pre-scooped after having you know frozen that like you do a little flash freeze on a cookie sheet freeze them in the scoop that you would cook them in that way you can take out one two three four five however many you want at any given time and then you can just bake them very easily another option which you guys suggested is that you lay them flat just like this and then you score the bag with you know a knife uh not like a real knife but like the edge of like you know a spoon or a chopstick or whatever and you score the bag so that then you end up with like little squares you would have to fill it less than this in order for that to work and then you can basically break them off the way you would the cookies you get at like the grocery store when they come in the little skinny pouch um so i did neither of those i was so tired after making all of this dough i just was like it's fine it's done this is good enough for me so we are gonna go ahead and get to our scooping and i think i'm gonna make I'm gonna see how many this makes. This is, like I said, a double batch. I'm gonna see how many it looks like this is gonna make and then I'll decide how much of it I'm gonna do today. Both of our ovens are preheated, so girl, we are ready to go. All right, so for the butterscotch cookies, they do get cooked at 350 for 11 to 15 minutes. And I, this is my recipe, so I wrote that um, originally. And yes, it does vary. Like I said, the second batch is not gonna take as long as the first batch and it just kind of, I don't know, I really keep my eye on it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do the two tablespoon scoop for these ones because I like them big, but I like them consistent. So I do a two tablespoon scoop, but I flatten it out so that now when I scoop, it's like a very, it, they're all going to be very, very consistent. Pretty much the same size. I'm not going to fit a ton on here. Whose bed have your boots been under? I do wish I had the bigger cookie sheets. Like I had them in the past, but I don't know. I use them so rarely. Like I really only make cookies for Christmas, even though I love it. If I could only pick one dessert to have for the rest of my life, like it's cookies. Followed closely by creme brulee because creme brulee slaps. Oh, cheesecake is also delicious. Oh, tres leches. You know what? <laughs> we're getting, we're getting ahead of ourselves here. If you guys could have, no, this is not fair. Life does not force you to have one dessert for the rest of your life okay but what is your favorite like you're presented with you know ice cream cake cookies chocolate bars whatever who are you taking home with you is it cookie because for me it's cookie almost almost every time is coffee on the table because it's coffee but then if coffee's not there it's cookie <laughs> i don't think coffee counts coffee shouldn't count i will say it's very easy to scoop out of the bag if you're doing the bag method it's easier than scooping out of like a tub but um, you know, live your life, do whatever works for you. I'm listening to Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. So when I'm not on here talking to you guys, that's what I'm listening to. I'm like an hour or so into it. Not a huge Tessa Bailey fan, but I also don't dislike her. So her books are usually pretty middle of the road for me, but I'm ready to be like pleasantly surprised and be like obsessed with one. Not yet though. <laughs> I would have liked if they had a male narrator in this one because the woman is doing the male POV chapters. And um, you know, I like, the male voice i like men's voices i like lewis's voice it was like one of my favorite things about him which was really helpful when you're like in a long distance relationship you know what i'm saying like we were kind of forming it from afar 
when we first got together. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just do two at a time. So this is just 18 cookies. I'm gonna do them side by side. Um, and if I want, like if I see that, you know, the inside's getting cooked quicker, I'll just flip flop them. But there she goes. Use a freaking timer, y'all. It'll get you when you're making cookies. Okay. Overcooked. You can see, right? They don't look burnt and the bottom is not going to show it, but these are 100% overcooked. So 10 minutes is, I don't know, I must have a better oven this time around. I've never made these in this oven. And then this one sucked. Do you see how curled it is? <laughs> but cookies are not quite as cooked on that one, which means I need to adjust my cook times down at this house, which is good to know, at least in that oven. Anyway, the quicker I get these off of here, the better. They're not like hard or anything, but when they cool, they're going to be harder. But because it's such a thick cookie, I'm not gonna have like, you know, a rock or anything on my hands. But for me, this is far beyond where I would like, like my cookie to be. But if you take a look at the bottom, it's like, a, you can tell it's kind of caramelized a little, a little more a little more than it should be. I'll show you like a perfect one in a minute. My other oven doesn't cook this. Uh, oh snap, I flipped it over. My other oven doesn't cook them as fast. This is so interesting. So I expected this, that's why I did it with these cookies. Um, and then this silk hat, like it, it bubbled. I mean, it didn't hurt the cookie per se. It just kind of makes it more difficult. That's what cookie making is, it's okay. It, sometimes they go a little over, sometimes they don't. It's it's fine. Those are what we like to call coffee cookies. I think I'm going to switch this one to parchment paper because th this, this is just, this is unacceptable. It changing the shape of my cookies, that's unacceptable. Okay, my friends, let me show you a properly cooked one. Looks like this on the top. Looks like this underneath, right? And then this is one of the ones that got overcooked. So it looks like that underneath. It's slight, but from the top, you can definitely see the difference. So now I have five left in this oven. Um, so what this ended up making was nine plus nine plus nine plus nine. We had 36 plus five. So I ended up making 41 cookies. One of them was slightly small, so really 40 cookies. And now I'm doing the chocolate chip cookies, but I'm doing them with the one tablespoon scooper. So let's head over there. Now we are scooping the chocolate chip dough. We're using the one tablespoon scooper and then the recipe called for, I think it was this recipe. I should pull it out. The recipe called to sprinkle a little bit of fleur de sel. Is that what it's called? This is just finishing salt. So it called for a little bit. Oh, sorry, my light. It called for a little bit of finishing salt, so I'm just gonna do a little ding, 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 ding on top of each one. These are gonna be little baby chocolate chip cookies. All right, guys, I'm done with these ones. This is what it should look like. It should be kind of pale, and then the bottom is like this caramely kind of color. This is also a possibility where the bottom is lighter, but the top is still that super pale color. This is from a separate batch. They cooked in two different ovens. And this is what you don't wanna do. These ones are too brown. They're still gonna taste good, I have the chocolate chip ones in here, and these ones call for you to drop the pan. I'm gonna try that cookie for you guys real quick, just so you can see the consistency. But these chocolate chip ones uh, ask that you take the pan, and you basically go like that. And what that does is it takes the puffed up part, mm, you're not gonna be able to see it, I'll have to move the camera. It takes the puffed up part, and it kind of, it kind of drops it, they're gonna puff again, but it makes the whole thing cook a little bit different. So the entire thing is gonna be chewy. You're not gonna have like hard, hard edges. So anyway, this is one of the ones that came out. It, it's, it's, it's too crunchy. So it, it's thick, so it's still gonna be soft, but you saw how it like broke as opposed to kind of like, you know what I mean? Like a chewy cookie would. Yeah. So this one is too hard, IMO, but it still tastes good. It tastes really good. I really don't think that, they're not burnt. They're no. just harder than I like it. I like it soft. Lewis likes it hard. He likes for me to knock them as hard as I possibly can. I told you the thing is that the oven cooks faster. You gotta, you gotta. This one cooks faster and this one cooks normal. Right, so you gotta watch it. Oh, thanks. I told you that already. You're in a I'm, I'm doing 10 different things. I know, but if you would have applied it, 
been if able I would have focused on just one. These are so good. No, if you would have applied it, you would have been able to, you would have been able to, you know, benefit from the softer cookie. But, you know what they say, a hard head makes a soft behind. I guess that's why you're behind so soft. My butt's pretty hard. No, I beg to differ. Your butt's pretty hard. Exactly. That's what I don't got no hard head like that. Yeah, right. You have the hardest head I know of. Sorry, the mic was backwards, but it's still good. It's just, you guys, it looks literally like magical outside. Can I show you? <laughs> Down, one second. So you see they're kind of puffed up. The second you do that, they all fall. And now you can just, actually I think these are good. I don't like my cookies, obviously like super brown. So um, these ones got a little closer together. They spread a little more, I think, because they were on the top shelf. Now, if you are concerned with the shape of the cookie, you can always do the method with the uh, cup where let me show you. While they're still warm, you can put a cup over them and kind of move it around. And it'll create like a perfectly circular little cookie. So like with these ones where they kind of went together, if I really cared, I could separate them and reshape them before they like cool. I, I don't really care, but I just want to show you. <laughs> just give them a little dee 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 dee. And it'll kind of make them round. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> I cut off part of it. Yeah, I cut off part of his edge there. But like I said, I am not personally super concerned, but if you wanted to, it's a really easy way to, to make them like a perfectly round little cookie. All right, so these were the chocolate chip ones. It was a new recipe. Oh, the mic. So these are the chocolate chip ones. Uh, these ones are still kind of cooling or whatever. I had to wipe down the sill pads with like a, a towel because yeah, the chocolate, because they're so thin, and the chocolate chips I used were actually slightly bigger. They were not like regular chocolate chips. Um, they melted and you can see them on the bottom of the cookie. So some of them went all the way through and like kind of melted onto the thing, which is not a big deal or whatever. But um, these are extremely thin as you can see. And then they're all kind of flecked with salt on top just a little bit. This is definitely not my favorite chocolate chip recipe, but it's different. So I'm not mad at it but they are gonna remain very thin. However, they are incredibly soft and chewy. So they can hold their shape, but if I were to break it right now, you would see it's like a really soft cookie. So that's great. I put the other cookies in here. Clearly they don't fit. I'm gonna sort them out later and put them in different containers later. But for now, this is perfect. I'm just gonna like line them all up. I wish I had like 10 more of these, but apparently I only bought two. Why, girl? I don't know. But I have about half of the chocolate chip cookie dough left, but I think I'm gonna call it a day on the chocolate chips because we have so much cookie dough over there, guys. We cannot get caught up on the basic baddies. Okay, I was gonna do the peanut butter ones, but it's still a little bit frozen, so we're gonna go ahead and do the gingerbread and crinkle ones. So I'm just gonna make a bunch of cookie dough balls real quick. I mean, you know, just scoop them real quick. And then the only thing about these is that they get rolled in powdered sugar before bake them. But I'm going to do a bunch of these balls. You can see how incredibly easy it is even when it's just frozen. Like it's 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 very easy to just scoop your cookie, right? I'm going to roll these obviously because I'm going to roll in the sugar, but you really don't need to roll them. Like they'll cook fine if you just go straight onto the pan. I hope these ones are good. I really want to like like gingerbread cookies a little bit more. They're so festive. Oh, the mic is backwards again. Guys, it's killing me. It's killing me flipping this mic. So here they are on the pan. The idea is that they're going to spread and then you'll be able to see the gingerbread, you know, from beneath it. I'm going to do the rest and throw them in the oven. Okay, girl. So my timers are going off, but the powdered sugar just disappeared. So we're gonna do it a little differently this time. Let me show you, hold on. Yes, there's some powdered sugar on them, but I mean, it's giving like mold. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't look cute. Oh, maybe I can cover them in a little bit of powdered sugar, but oh, I should sift it on top while they're still hot. Hang on. I want one of those little spinny sifter things. I don't have one, but I'm going to get one. Okay, here we go. 
This is going to be so cute. Now let's go ahead and give them a drop. Cracks. It gives them all cracks. You know what? It's the heat that makes the sugar go away. <laughs> so maybe I should have done it while they were cold. <laughs> Tessa Bailey, girl, she's, she, if you could hear what I was listening to right now, <laughs> girl, <laughs> chill. Ooh, these ones are browner, but like the crackliness, these ones look better. I'm not going to put anything on these. The uh, powdered sugar makes these like a hundred times better. They're great. Um, I could probably do like another two minutes in the oven so this next set i'm gonna let them cook slightly longer but i love them they're so good they really are pretty good they have a light gingerbread flavor they're squishy and soft like i think i don't like the hardness of gingerbread but it's got a really nice flavor i'll compare these ones to the other gingerbread ones i make but the other ones are going to be dipped in a maple like icing and you cannot compete with an icing dipped cookie or an icing covered cookie like that cookie it got a cheat code. It's not fair. All right, it is peanut butter cookie time. And I am gonna do some with like, you know, the fork marks. But these ones are all gonna have the little kiss in them. Ta-da! So I'm gonna put a little kiss on all of them. Little kissy. <laughs> I gotta take a break and eat a freaking vegetable, bro. Because trying these cookies every time to make sure, you know, like, they're not poisonous. I can't handle it. <laughs> I told Lewis, I was like, I wish someone else was home so they could try them and just tell me. He was like, leave them. I'll try them when I get home. <laughs> just got done doing the peanut butter ones. And next, I'm gonna do the peppermint mochas. May or may not, ugly carrot the ugly carrot <laughs> um we may or may not dip them today i'm hoping to get it all done today but we do have a date night like as a family tonight so i don't know how much i'll get done it's got worse i'm gonna try that brahmi roman lupini dip that i got yesterday i showed it to you guys it was from thrive market mm-mm I'll finish that, but I won't like doing it. This is just Greek yogurt with some ranch like powder in it. I ate half of it yesterday. I ended up doing like mega peanut butter cookies, not realizing how much they were gonna spread. Let me show you. They're massive, that one broke. They're so big. These ones came out cute though. I think that's it for peanut butter cookies. That's more than enough. How perfect is this tray? They go from super duper chewy and soft to chewy and soft to chewy with, you know, a little firmness to pretty much crunchy. I mean, they're soft on top, but they're crunchier on the bottom. But look at the, look at the gradient of color. Freaking obsessed. <laughs> no, I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> this is the best one. These two are the best ones. This was a little over, this was a little under. Somehow I gotta get these in like this container. I'm out of containers. They don't even fit in here. Like, what am I doing? I rearranged those, but none of them fit. <laughs> okay, the peppermint mokies are in the oven. And I just wanted to show you how good these ones came out. I mean, I guess everyone has different preference. Y'all not gonna tell me that the faucet's in your face? Um, I guess everyone has like a different preference for a cookie, right? But for me, like a peanut butter cookie, I hate how crumbly they get. Like. I don't like that. So these ones were huge. You can see they didn't get super brown or anything on the bottom, but they are chewy. So they got a nice little, a nice little break. I think if I put another piece of cookie in my mouth, I'm not going to be able to do it. I mean, it's too much sugar. It's too, I'm not even used to eating in the morning and having like one, two, three, four. I've so far I've had one of each. And it's, that's a lot of cookies. I'm making nine different kinds. Like, I need to chill. I need somebody else to come home. <laughs> but 
But um, these ones are almost done. I'm just gonna cook them and cool them. And then we'll dip them and cover them with the peppermint uh, chunks later. They're so good, so different than all other cookies. And I scooped them with a peanut butter scooper, the peanut butter cookie scooper. And so like four of them kind of have like a little bit of peanut butter cookie in them too. And I'm like, I'm not mad at that. Like it looks, they look good, kind of mixed. And I'm like, what about a peanut butter peppermint mocha? Are we doing too much? Ah, I do like doing too much. I do, it's my favorite. All right, these are the brown butter pecan ones. Um, I don't know, they're kind of ugly. You're supposed to put a pecan across the top and that would have made them look cuter, but TBH, I literally hate pecans, so I just put a little sugar on them. It says you're supposed to put sugar on them too, so. These are the peppermint mocha ones. They are perfect, so those are gonna get dipped. And then, you saw those, and, oh yeah, you saw these too. So, looks like a bunch of nibbles. <laughs> LOL. I'm a grown up. All right, we're cooking the rest of those, and then we don't, oh, I keep wanting to look at my watch, but it didn't charge last night. So, do we have enough time for the rest? I don't know if we have enough time to do everything. I do still have like an hour or so left. There's this guy who won't leave me alone, you guys. He contacts me in the weirdest ways. Like, I don't wanna give anybody else any ideas on how to do it, so I don't wanna like tell you guys, but he's like, he creeps me out. He, I keep blocking him. I block him everywhere I block him, but he can keep finding ways to like contact me and he leaves the weirdest messages. Not like, it's like they're not coherent. Like, it's a little terrifying, something, is definitely a miss with this guy. So I don't wanna say his name or anything because I don't wanna give him any juice, but I just hate, I hate every time like stuff comes up on my phone. I told um, what my siblings, uh, a couple of my brothers, I was like talking to them and, and I kept getting these notifications from this person. Again, I cannot block him through the ways that he is contacting me. Um, it's not like my phone number, but I keep, I, every time he tries to contact me uh, through every uh, social media, through everything, like I try to get rid of it. But um, I told my brothers and they were like, I was joking, like we don't really be having like serious heart to hearts on the regular. Um, so I was like, hey, if I ever end up missing, it's this guy because like he literally won't stop. And then I showed them one of his many things that he has, their shrines to me. And um, they were like, what the hell is that? And I was like, oh, okay, so not as LOL as I make it out to be. They're like, what's his name? Like, I'm like, yeah. Over the years, you know, you always get, I, there's just a lot. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people, you know, that, sure, there's like regular stuff, like people just being people and being haters and just being mean or trying to dig up stuff about you, your family, your your dog, your cat, whatever. They try to just, you know what I'm saying? There's like that. There's like just the malicious stuff. And then there's like the people that take it a little too far. And I mean, I think that's taking it too far as well. But these other people are, they go further. It's like they want you to know that they know things or that they're like watching you or something. And I'm like, those people be freaking me out, dog. They be freaking me out. Um, okay, my cookies are almost done. These ones look cuter. It's because these ones kind of retain the shape of the scooper. Um, yeah, that's why they came out kind of funny. You never know when a cookie's gonna like spread or when it's gonna like stay the way that you scooped it. You know what I'm saying? Well, these ones did not, they did not spread because they were still pretty cold. So they didn't spread as much. I mean, I think they look good. I didn't try one. The thought of trying it. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> I can't very well feed it to people if I don't even know what it tastes like, you guys. You know what? I like it. I was gonna ask Lewis to get me a candied pecan so that I could put a candied, like glazed pecan on the top of each one instead of a plain pecan because plain pecans just are nasty. So, um, but he didn't pick up the phone when I called. And, 
What if I put my own? Like, what if I glaze? <laughs> we saw how good it went when you glazed them last time. No, the next thing we'll do are the gingerbread ones. I want the last thing I do to be the rolled sugar cookies because I want to completely clean off the surface and then do the rolled sugar cookies. So we're going to do the other gingerbread ones next, the ones that are going to be dipped in maple icing. All right, little love bugs. All right, guys. So I'm sitting here contemplating life because, I mean, we have a serious amount of cookies already made. I have an insane amount of cookies made. Like, just looking at them now, <laughs> I've, I done overdid it. So, it would be one thing if I was the only person bringing cookies and I was bringing it to a party of, let's say, 50 people. I'm not, and I'm not. I'm one of like five people probably doing cookies and I'm bringing it to a gathering of four plus four plus four plus two plus three plus five. Well, that's not that many. I wasn't doing the math, but I assume you were. And that's not that many. So, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save the sugar cookies and we're gonna do rolled sugar cookies a different day. I'll still link the recipe because it's tried and true, beautiful, wonderful, fabulous, love, laugh, love it. And we'll do that one a different day. And then this is the dough that I had left. I used all of the peppermint mocha dough and I used all of the something else, I don't know. But I ended up with the soft gingerbread with the glaze. I ended up with the gingerbread crinkles, the chocolate chip, and the peanut butter. Oh, I made all of the butterscotch cookies, which I, I did not need to do that. But we are gonna be doing, obviously Christmas. I'm gonna make cookies for Christmas, I think, and take them to my mom's house Christmas day. Um, so I'll probably make a bunch of cookies that day. We're gonna be making tamales on like the 27th or the 28th. So my mom's got a bunch of like work people go, you know, like coming by or whatever. So um, I'll probably take cookies that day. So we have something to like snack on while we're making tamales, which is quite a laborious process. And um, Vlogmas will be over by then. So I I don't know. Someone's like, what was the, ch you know, what are the chances you'll continue daily vlogs after Vlogmas? And I can tell you the chances are zero. Um, I have enjoyed it. It is a good time. I do feel a little bit bad when I'm not doing anything at all and I gotta kind of string together a video still. Um, and I'm like, oh, I should have done something today, but like, <laughs> I did. You know what I mean? I just didn't do anything like video worthy that day. Uh, but I, I might take like a very small break, like a week or so, uh, and then, and then come back to you guys. So, uh, but probably back to my Monday, Wednesday, Friday gig, not every day, girl. This, 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 this is something. I'm shocked I'm doing it. Girl, I'm going to the wrong one. Oh, oh, actually these are very cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up a bit uh, because I gotta go get the kitties. But when we get home, I still have to make the icing and dip the other cookie. Like we're not done doing this yet. Um, but then I'm gonna switch into a Cutie Pie Honey Bunch outfit and then we're all gonna go to dinner. I probably won't end up filming it because I'm sure at this point this vlog has got to be a million hours long. But if you've never been to the Melting Pot, maybe I'll give you a couple little snippets. It's a fondue restaurant and so you just do fondue. And we do like the big night out or whatever. So you get like a cheese fondue and you dip whatever, apples and breads and carrots and whatever. And then you get a salad, you pick whatever salad you want. They do have some good salads. And then you can pick a broth fondue, which is like the main course one. So I always get the moho, moho, joho, moho. I don't know, I think it's called moho. And it's like a Caribbean one, I think. And then that's where you like put your meat, your chicken, your shrimp, your lobster, your filet mignon, your whatever, your potatoes, your broccoli, your mushroom caps, whatever. You put all that in there and you cook it and eat it with like a million different dipping sauces. And then you can also follow that up with a chocolate pot and they create, you know, they do it all in front of you. It's a whole show, blah, 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 and whatever. Then they give you like chocolate and you can do like little, uh, there's like little cheesecakes, there's uh, marshmallows and fruit and whatever. And then you dip that in your little chocolate thing. And it's a fun time. It's a long dinner. It usually it takes like two, two and a half hours. And uh, I like that. I like the chill laid back sort of vibe of like a relaxed dinner, not one that's like rushing you right out the door. Got these folks. Gonna melt some white chocolate and dip these bad boys.
Dee, 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 dee. All right, this is it for the day. I'm gonna make the little, or I just made it. The glaze for the soft gingerbread cookies. So this is the glaze. And it's really easy. It's just like butter, powdered sugar, maple syrup. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so, oh, and a little bit of salt, it says. So we're gonna dip it about halfway. And then you put it on some wax paper. And there it is. There's that one, and then those ones are done. Um, but that's it, guys. My camera's about to die, so this is probably a good place to end it. So hope you guys have enjoyed today's vlog, miss. Maybe I'll use dinner and I'll show it to you tomorrow in tomorrow's vlog. I don't know. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye.